almost every character starts from 2D concept art, and mine is no exception. So first I made a few sketches, and I choose this one. Nearly all further work I have done in a blender. I started with a high poly modeling. At this stage I cared only about how my model looks. Next I moved on to retopology. And at this stage you need to think carefully about the purpose of your model. I wanted to make a game character that will run smoothly on mobile devices too. So my choice is a reasonably low poly model. And here you can see the final result. I think she turned out quite charming. Let's get down to part 1. This part will be dedicated to sculpting her face. Like any proper sculptor, we will start our work with a sphere. I usually have two more windows open in addition to the main window at which I am working. The bottom one contains concept art. Usually it's colored concept art, from which I will pick colors later. But uh, mine is not, it's just a sketch. Finally, the top one is a 3D view from a camera with the same concept art but slightly transparent. I use it as a guide to help me to match proportions of my model with the art. The standard topology of the sphere doesn't suit us. So the first thing we will do is remesh in it. Now let's start sculpting the head of our character. I will cut off the front part of the sphere and this way we will begin to prepare the character school's basic structure. I'm smoothing everything. Building out nose bridge. And let's now carve out holes for the future eye sockets. In this case, I will not really bother too much to make my model perfectly close to concept art. But at work in my studio, producers and game designers, they are approving every concept art. And that's why it is essential to match your model into the art as close as you possibly can. Shaping her head. Smoothing everything. I am roughly placing the mouth of our B character. As you can see, I only use a few brushes. I believe that a sculpt of any complexity can be done with a limited set of brushes. Naturally, when you work in a program like ZBrush, you are always tempted to use special brushes, the ones that will make your work so much better. <laughs> Therefore, many people refuse to switch to a blender since there are not many brushes there. But I assure you that the blender works excellent without any additional brushes. My main brushes are draw, clay strips, crease, pinch, scrape and grab. I will rotate my camera, screen left top one I mean, around my model to make the camera angle more in line with the 2D art I have. I want to draw your attention to the fact that I'm making a smiling character. I fancy smiles and sculpting a smiling character is easier for me. So I will be able to make her cute and nice much faster. But we must keep in mind that we will have to remove the smile in the final stages of modeling and replace it with a natural poker face. I am scaling the character's face slightly on y-axis. It is very important to remember to rotate camera around your model constantly, changing camera angle every now and then. As you saw my character looked ok in the front view. But in the side view, her head turned out to be so stretched. And the sooner you will notice that, the better. I'm working on the shape of the head and skull again. 
I wanted to make Bee's face round, like a small child, so I spent much time working on her cheeks. Ok, now it's finally time to add eyes. I will add simple spheres and place them approximately in the eye sockets. I will also create a dark material to highlight the iris of the eye. Then I will make a copy of an eyeball and I will enlarge it slightly and cut off the bottom half. I'm closing the hole. Then duplicate hemisphere and rotate it. Here we go, we got the eyelids. We have only to open them. I really like to keep the eyelids separate from the head. I come back to them over and over and over, changing their shapes. And now I adjust the shape of the eye socket around the eyes. You probably noticed, on the concept art her eyes are enormous. And when you make a character like this, it can be challenging to fit those big eyes into her head and create natural looking skull around them. As you can see, I have been working for a while now, but my character still looks like a potato. And I want to tell you, this is completely normal. So don't be intimidated by the artists who make amazing, beautiful works on YouTube in the first seconds. I was watching those videos and thinking that I can do that good so fast, but it's okay, we are all different. And if you put enough determination and don't give up too quickly, then even a potato can turn into a little princess. Or maybe a prince. Now let's move on to the eyelashes and eyebrows. To make the eyelashes, I'm adding a path curve and a circle. Then in path settings, find the geometry tab then bevel and use the object button. And finally, with an object picker, select your circle. I also assign a dark material to the lashes, the same one for iris. Now, all that remains is to switch to edit mode and carefully place them around the eye. You can scale them vertex by vertex by Alt plus S hotkey or rotate them by Ctrl plus T hotkey. Refining her lips. Also working a little bit on her nose. It's crucial to have a skull bone structure that forms the head of our character, even if this character is stylized. If you don't think about a bone structure, the shape of the head can often turn out to be very strange. Sometimes it can be challenging to figure out what went wrong, but you have that feeling that something doesn't look right. In this case, I advise checking again whether the shape of the character's skull is readable through the face. As I said, it doesn't really matter if your character is stylized or not.
We are already close to finishing her head. I'm spending some more time on minor edits. Making her chin a little bit more pronounced. For her brows, I will do the same as for her eyelashes. I will add a path and a circle. Then the same in the path settings, I will find geometry tab, then bevel and use the object button. And finally, with an object picker, select your circle. I am moving brows slightly higher to match the concept art roughly. And now it looks like she is surprised by something. I am trying to make her as cute as possible. As I said before, her eyes are pretty big on 2D art. I will try to make them bigger on the high poly model too. I'm scaling them and now they really begin to fall out of her head. So I will move them back more into her head and start shaping eye sockets around new huge eyes. As always, I am looking at the model from every angle possible constantly changing and changing views. Don't forget that, it is really important. Eyelid's topology leaves much to be desired, so I will remesh it and re-sculpt it. Smoothing. Refining shapes here and there.
working a little bit on her cheeks. working on her nose bridge this was the first part of character modeling 